great rescues from the Bible. Stories in the Bible that are significant to us today as they were then. What's that a picture of? Fire truck, isn't it? What do fire trucks do? Save people. Save people. That's right. Every chance they get, they save people. We're going to look at some stories that maybe you heard in Sunday school. Maybe you heard at Vacation Bible School. But these stories are significant. And they mean something to us today. You know, we just sang that song. When I feel afraid and I think I've lost my way. Still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear. As long as you are near, please be near me to the end. God's word speaks to us, guys. Strength, encouragement, comforting words from God himself put together in this thing called a holy Bible that strengthens us, that builds us up to where we can share with others. We're going to talk a little bit tonight about three fellas. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. Believe it or not, I was typing that name in looking on YouTube, and Louis Armstrong had a song, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, back in about 1940. That was quite a hit. And through this song, he told the entire story <coughs> of King Nebuchadnezzar and all the crazy things that were happening. It's a wonderful song. If you get a chance to look it up, I'd like you to hear that. Something I want you to understand tonight, though, guys. You yourself are a great rescue story. Do you understand? If we were the only persons on this earth that God could ever touch, He would have sent Jesus anyways. The very first man God created, Adam, failed. And He knew at that point, all mankind, as long as it existed, would need help, would need a Savior. So He sent Jesus. He sent Jesus for me, he sent Jesus for you. We took communion this morning, remembering the sacrifices Christ made on the cross. Next Sunday, we're going to be baptizing folks, drowning the old man and the new man coming up fresh out of the water, brand new, in accordance to God's holy word. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to read this story. It's a little lengthy, but bear with me if you would. I'm going to read Daniel chapter 3. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 90 feet high, 9 feet wide, and set it up on the plain of Dura in the providence of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, perfects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officers to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps, perfects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all other provincial office, officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before him. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, this is what you are commanded to do, O peoples, nations, and men of every language. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zyre, lyre, harps, pipes, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. 
Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zyre, lyre, harp, and all kinds of musics, all the peoples, nations, and men of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You have issued a decree, O king, that everyone who hears a sound of the horn, flute, zyre, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, O king. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summons Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zyre, lyre, harps, pipes, and all kinds of musics, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you had set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his armies to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, O king. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire and the satraps, perfect, governors and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies 
nor was a hair of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of the nation, of any nation or language, who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, be cut into pieces, and their houses be turned into piles of rubble. For no other God can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this story, Lord. We thank you for this account that actually took place. How you were able to protect these three young men who stood true to your word, Lord, who put no other gods before you, the one, the only true God. Lord, we thank you for this story. We thank you for the encouragement we can draw from this. We thank you for the good news that it speaks to us about your power and the authority you have within your grasp. Father, now tonight we just pray that these words would speak truth to us. We will find encouragement from them so we can share them with others. Just be with us this evening, Lord, as we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What would you do? What would you do? In this day and age, who's the most powerful person you know? And they made a decree that every living person, regardless of where they live, regardless of what they look like, regardless of male, female, children, adult, must do this. And what you're asked to do does not line up with God's word. What would you do? You see, each and every one of us will answer that question perhaps a little differently. We all have points in our lives where maybe we can bend a little bit or maybe we can't. God has created each and every one of us a little different. We all look at things a little differently. We all have different ideas. Carolyn and I today were talking and she said, I'd like to bounce this off of you. What are your ideas on this? Talk a little bit. We're all unique. We're all special. And it takes us all together to form a bond, to form a word that God will bless. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, three brothers, would not bend on this topic to the point of possibly their lives. They wouldn't bend. The king brought them right before him. The furnace was seven times Potter. The guys taking them to throw them in were dying. It was so hot. What would you do? Would you stop halfway there and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not, I'm not sure I can do it. You know, nowhere in that story do we hear their faith wavering. I am so astonished by the faith of these three men. Nothing was going to shake them. Nothing was going to change their mind. God is who He says He is. And He will do 
Whatever he says, he will do. I will not forget your love for me and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus, my guide, hold me by your side. I will love you to the end. Jesus has promised us he will never leave us nor forsake us as long as we know him. He will do what he says he will do. He will deliver us from the evil one. Daddy. Their acknowledgement of God over the world's most powerful king resulted in God's <coughs> supreme power being witnessed by that king, didn't they? Do you think if they would have talked to King Nebuchadnezzar before this about their God, he would have listened? He's the most powerful man on the earth. No one's going to change his mind. He's going to do it his way, and he already had it made up. I'm the king. This is the way it is. But these three young men proved him different, didn't they? They said, no, King, there's another way. There's a God you don't know. Dad! And we'll even walk to the end of our days for it. Matthew chapter 10, verses 26 to 28 on page 688 tells us this. Jesus had said to us, so do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid for those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Do not be afraid. Christ is with you. Walk in your knowledge of knowing him. Jesus said, what I have spoken to you, share it with others. John chapter 16, verse 1 says this, These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God's service. And these things will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I do not say to you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me where you are going. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Christ was talking to the apostles about going to be with God and they were confused. They were sad. They did not have this faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had followed Christ everywhere, done everything he had said, but failed to realize the faith that was in himself. Jacob and I, over uh, his break, have been talking about the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he struggles with the differences in them. And he said to me today, he said, Dad, I think I got it. I said, good. He says, God is a spirit. I said, you're right. God's everywhere. And he said, the Bible said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He said, okay. He said, so if God's a spirit, and God speaks, 
As soon as he speaks, that's now Jesus. God's spoken word is Jesus. And he says, the Holy Spirit is the strength and encouragement we receive from that spoken word. That's why Christ said, when he ascended to heaven, I now send you my comforter, the Holy Spirit, which we find in God's word when we read it. You see, when we read God's word, the words of Christ, we draw strength, we draw encouragement, we draw hope to face tomorrow. And guys, that's the Holy Spirit speaking in your heart, working on to you. He said that it's actually three parts of one person. I said, you got it, Jake. You got it. God's a spirit. When he speaks, Jesus becomes the authority of that spoken word. And when it touches your life, and changes you, turns you over like a plow in a field. That's the Holy Spirit working in your life. We can't be afraid of it. We have all got to face tomorrow. Trust in God. Learn from what we have learned. Believe His Word. If this says do it, we do it. If this says we don't do it, we don't do it. We sang that song, Thy word is a lamp unto my path and a light unto my feet. Oh, the lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I said that backwards, didn't I? That's how true God's word is. It's as true as us sitting here tonight. Every story we read, Everything that comes out of God's holy word is as true and as real as the person sitting next to you. And His Holy Spirit is here to comfort us and to lead us and to walk with Him in His ways. Lynn, we sang a song tonight. I don't know what I did with my bulletin. Here we go. 530, no. No, 534. Yeah. 533. I want to sing that tonight. There is a Savior. Can you guys take your psalm books and turn with me to page 533?
Thank you.